Hello all, this evening I'm going to show you how to produce, produce fly-throughs as well as add trees using the Lumion rendering engine from our Rhino file here. For those of you not aware with Lumion, it is a architectural, external architectural rendering engine which can be used in conjunction with programs such as Rhino, ArchiCAD, Revit and the like with the with the third party plugin, live plugin, which is basically a live sync of whatever program you're using. So in order to do that, you must have three things. Firstly, a Lumion account. Secondly, an uh, uh, Lumion, a st Lumion student license, which you can request from the Lumion website. And thirdly, and finally, the actual Lumion live sync plugin within Rhino, which is this thing here at the top, which you can download from the Lumion website. I will post the links to all of these on the screen. So to get started, as you can see, we've got our model open. As you can see, it's a bit slow at the moment because I've got it packed to the nine. So we'll be focusing on adding trees within these two zones here but for the purpose of this tutorial we're just going to focus on the bottom zone here which is the victorian which is basically which will mainly be which will mainly comprise of trees or plants from the victorian era so we've got the south melbourne town hall and the police station as well as the town square just to name a few things so to get started with the lumion rendering engine We've got to click on, make sure it is loaded, that the toolbar is loaded. So if you're not, if you're not all, if it isn't enabled, so what you need to do is you've got to make sure that it is displayed up the top and there. And it is enabled from your plugins menu. From properties. So as you can see, I've got my properties menu open now, and the Lumion Live Sync is there, enabled. And then for our toolbars, make sure, is it in there? Doesn't seem to be, but I think the render plugin does take care of both, so. What we, but without further ado, let's get started with Lumion. So in order to get started, we need to click the play button there, which will start the live sync and consequently open Lumion. So what will happen is once you open Lumion, it will basically it will basically feed in a live live sync of what's on within the Rhino within the Rhino screen at the moment. So whatever moves I make within the Rhino screen and within the Lumion screen, they'll both sync at the same time. So without for, without, with, that, with that being said, we'll click on the play button. As you can see, just ignore, whoops. Sorry about that guys, sometimes just so you know, so if it does come up with an error, just click on the stop button and then start again. And as you can see, we've got Lumion open. This might take a couple of minutes, cons considering the size of the file. So be with be be with us. So and because we're already working with we're working with or with an already opened and generated file, it will basically skip the startup screen. The startup screen will only appear if you're starting it from the main from from Windows. As you can see in the background, now that we've got it open, we've got our main file. File which has been synced. So what we need to do is in order to bring it into our view, firstly, we'll need to zoom out. So 
to shift to zoom out, we just use our scroll wheel on our mouse and click, click space bar and shift to zoom out quickly. Into view. And then to move our thing, our model, we just move it along the little gizmo here. Until it's sort of in the middle. If you feel like it. If not, we can just rescale it. So to scale, we click on the little scale button, the scale button here, or L and then to bring it into the screen. So we'll make it about, we'll make it about one times, make it times, times zero. Which is to scale. And then we move it up a bit using the little elevator arrows or H. Just so it clears the thing, the terrain. And as you can see, we've got our model in ready to add our trees, which will be in part two. And for those of you who are not aware, what I'll do is in the next tutorial, I will basically sh add an extra screen just to show you what I meant by meant by live sync. See you in the next tutorial. So, adding on to part one. And in regards to the camera sync, what I was saying was with the camera sync, basically when you have Loom, your Rhino file open in Lumion as a live sync, initial live sync before you save it as a separate file, what will usually happen is if you have this button on here, little camera across, it will enable you, will allow you and allow you to enable or disable the camera sync. So when disabled, the camera sync or camera views in each program will remain independent from each other. Whereas if you have it on by clicking on it, and if you move, that's if it works, the camera views will automatically sync with each other. So as you can see, I've got, I've got Lumi on open. I'm not too sure if you can see. does work. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So, are you with me? Really depends on the size, on um, if you've already modified on, on the attributes of the file. So if you've, if you've already rescaled it, it might not apply. So, That's just a brief rundown on that. Yeah, so. As you can see, it will usually what will usually happen is it will basically just sync the two the views on the two screens, and that is it. Okay, continuing on from the first part of our tutorial regarding Lumion and producing flythroughs, this will part this part will involve the insertion and importation of different plants. So for our area, focus area that we're in, the south zone, which is Federation, we'll be adding in plants from that particular era. So with that, what we need to do is, we need to go in, so in Lumi, so in our, so with our toolbar down here, we click on place, and then import. And then what I'll do is we'll just do so first of all because we're working with Victorian. So for along this street here, 
I'll just add some Japanese maples or we'll do some weeping birches and then once we've selected our file a model name will come up in this dialog here and then we'll add a new toolbar since I've already got it uploaded we'll need to do an extra one so demo So Weeping Birch Demo and then Demo Category. So and then once we've got that in, as you can see, once we're on the screen, we've got our demo there. So our object there ready to be placed. And then once selected, we just add it in. As you can see, so once that's added in, I've just got to scale it up by clicking on the scale or alternatively, you can just do it like using the little scale thing here, the scale bar here. So yeah, so once that's in, we just can just move it. Just, you can feel free to just add more in if you want. And then the quickest way to do that is just click on the shift of the alt, sorry, and then drag. So what I want to do is I want to put a wheat, uh, elm every, every, or birch at every, whatever it is at every, every second. So do one there and then one further here. So we're going to do a nice tree line straight, as you can see at the moment. Mind you, this is, so as you can see, even though we're a bit too close, it's just for demonstration purposes. So we our tree lines, most of our trees in. Secondly, we'll add our We'll do some, might add some, what else can we add? We can add Japanese maple if you want, a Japanese maple. And demo, because I've already got it loaded in and then we add our demo into the demo folder. And as you can see, we've got it highlighted. Once it's imported for the first time, it will highlight. However, if you do exit, what you'll need to do is you click on place. So this is the regular default library here. And then to get into the import library, what we need to do is we need to go to this little wireframe building here. But since we've already got it in, we just click select and then scale it up. Mind you, some of these, mind you, when you do download models from 3D Warehouse or places like that, or just be mindful that some files, that, that is, it, not that it is really much of a concern, they do come in a 2D, so you might have to, it does take quite a bit of, positioning just to get to make them look effective. So we've got our maple in. What we'll do is we'll do drag one there and then one there. And then over here, just rotate it. Yeah, we just we can delete that one because it's to be too close. She can do one here as well. We can do one here. Yeah, there we go. And for our straight corners, what can we add? We might I might be able to. Um, we can do small enough. Might add a hedge. I might add some. I might add some lure ropes. Or some, or get some gardenias. So gardenia demo. 
We'll do gardenias at one end and then the ropes at the other. So back to that. So what I did in my file was I usually put on the corner, street corners, I mainly, mainly made them sort of a feature by adding in smaller plants. So for this particular exercise, I'm going to add in some gardenias. Make sure they're sort of away from the curb. But because we're doing them in figure only, it doesn't really matter. Just basic grayscale modeling. Oops, forgot to make sure the select was active. And for the purpose of this particular assignment, we don't have to worry about adding in a adding in texture as it will be in grayscale. As you can see, we've got our gardenias in. And to get up to the other end, the quickest way is to do Shift W and Spacebar. We'll add some little ropes. So this is just a bit of a, a bit of a demonstration of what plants I use for this particular precinct. So we've got our little ropes, basically like little lavender things. If they look like lavenders, but they're not. They're really pretty. Whoops. What else? Yep. Yep, and then and that's done. What well, the next part in the next part of the tutorial we'll be coloring in our trees according to the color scheme of the buildings, which is basically the heritage or the architectural style as per the map. As per the mapping scheme. So see you in a bit. So third part of the tutorial on Lumion, we're going to change the color of our trees according to the different architectural style. So we've, since we're working with Torian, we'll need to change it to this yellow. So to do that, firstly, you've got to make sure this is not essential, but I do it anyway, is that you've got to have all your plants on, on a separate layer. So as you can see, I've got a Victorian layer. So we've got our scenery on layer one and then our plants on Victorian on the second layer here titled Victorian. So as you can see, so to do to add your plants to the layer, to that particular layer, what we need to do is we need to go into, what we need to do is we need to click on the select and what will happen is, as you can see, we've got this little menu that comes up. So as you can see, I've already got this one here in Victorian, but we will, we're going to finish the rest of them off. So with that, we're going to do click on this Japanese maple here, which is still stuck on the default layer one. And then once we're once we've selected it, we click on this drop down menu and you just click Victorian to add it. 
and then from there with these plants there are different objects there are different options for selection objects so you can either either focus on the selection find selected objects and select all objects in the same category so what we need to do is we need to select the identical objects as you can see it's grabbed all of them and then from there we just click on Victorian so as you can see we've got everything in Victorian it also comes in handy this all objects in the same category also comes in handy if you're just wanting to if you're wanting to check what's on which layer so so going by the looks of things whoops I preferably do it from the top anyway so Japanese maple so select Make sure they're all selected. Select all identical objects. Victorian. The ropes. Yep, all selected. Good. And then the second part is we want to change the material, the colours of the thing to the yellow. The yellow that you see on the buildings over in the background there. So to do that, we need to select all identical objects. And also give us once we've got them highlighted or highlighted, it will give us a tally of up in the corner of how many we've got. And at the moment we've got 63. So materials. So to start editing the materials, we need to click on the little paint can at the top here on this tab. And that will bring us into the material editor. And then to do that it will prompt us here to import click on an imported model so for us we're going to click on the cherry tree edit to select both elements if they are separate we just click click alt and then once we're clicked on the material library as you can see we've got a whole selection of options so we can do glass billboard landscape water and the like but for us we're just going to focus on color so for us, once we've got, we just click on the paintbrush. And for yellow, it's just for us, we're just for the tutorial. I will make, and as you can see, it's applying it to all the plants of within the layer and of the same type. So we want to make our sort of you can add in your you can pick colors in order of color code or a number which we'll be doing so for us we've got our color codes as you can see at the screen so for victorian we just copy so we just pick the colors up from rhino So that's to click to do that. So basically, once we've selected our color, we've done both the trunk and the and the actual body or the actual foliage. So once we've done that, we can move on to the next set of plants. Actually, the ropes can be a bit finicky, so I'll leave them just. I'll leave them as just regular. And then, I've... 
but the thing is, yep. Another thing to be in mind and be mindful of, of mindful of is if you do work with two Ds, what will happen is if you do try to color them, in some cases they'll end up as a square. However, with the Japanese maples, they'll just end up as two D figures. But just warning with some plants, they will end up as a block, as a as a rectangular block. So in other cases, it bets it's best to leave them as is. So in other words, uncolored. So with that, we just go and look for our streak just to make sure everything is perfect. And then there is our color street, colored street. So just reiterating, make sure your plants are on a layer on your layer. And then to get to the color material editor, we just click on imported on the paint paint can and then on the tree and then the color squat color swatch. So once we're so color paintbrush here, color swatch, and then we just type in our code or you can just set pick, randomly pick a color depending on what you fancy and that is how you color trees in Lumion stay tuned for the next tutorial the final tutorial which will then focus on doing a short fly through render see you in a bit so our final fourth and final tutorial for this urban informatics series or this tutorial and the final installment in our urban informatics series will focus on how to produce a fly through render in Lumion. So in order to do that this would be perfect this is ideal if you're producing a fly through for example our final video. So in order to start what we need to do is we click on the movie button and it will come up with a net with on to a next on a different screen which you see a series of slide decks down the bottom here of storyboards whatever you want to call them and then to record a video what we need to do is we need to click on the record the other two buttons are import from a file so to start so basically looming on sort of an ad hoc movie editor in some respects but for in our purposes for our exercise we're just going to focus on recording a fly through so to start we click on the movie camera there and then what will happen is it will bring us into this screen and once we're in the screen the viewport screen we can adjust so the first thing we need to do is we adjust our eye level by clicking the up and down so for example I'm at if I'd say I'm about hmm, I'd say about make it 150 yeah, 150 and secondly we can adjust our focal length by just dragging this this bar here which is basically just a zoom so for us we want to make it wide so I'd do it around 20 or 21 and with that, once those, and then we can adjust, and then the next part, we need to adjust our, we just start adding in frames. And to add the frames in, it's just a matter of clicking add camera keyframe. And then we move on to our next. And this will then generate, and then once we render, it will then generate a fly through from those different still frames. Since we're only working up to the top of the street, yeah, you know, I'm only gonna be doing a few. Yeah, 
And as you can see, we've got South Melbourne Town Hall in the foreground there. All right. And the rest of Emerald Hill, which was this particular estate in the background. So once we've got our fly-throughs, we've got various options. We can either ease in smooth or ease out smooth. So basically we'll add in a fly frame. And then we can also view out and then ease in linear. So linear is basically just a straight, sharp cut. And then and then and ease is just a fade in, so. And also, so as you can see on the screen at the moment, I've got it in preview mode, as you can see, as indicated by the bar there. And another option we can do is we can make the clip shorter. So at the moment, it's at 162, which is about two, two and a half minutes. So we can make it about 20. So there is a pre minimum. So the short shortest amount that we can make the clip is about 17 seconds so once we've got that and the so depending on how many frames you've got the minimum of the the shorter the 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 clip the time of the clip in the shortest sense does vary so for about let's say about about seven frames it's about 17 seconds so once we're happy with our fly through, as you can see on the screen, we can go ahead and render. And then to do that, we just click on the tick here, which is the save clip and go back to movie mode. And then with that, we've entered the final rendering, the final stage, which is the rendering. So, and as you can see down the bottom, is if you do, you can batch render. So you can add different batch, so if you're multi doing different, so multiple areas in the one batch, you can just add them in and then do them in the one process. And then, and then for, and if you want to do, just say like if you made a boo-boo in one of them and you wanted to go back and edit, you can just basically just select. So for, when you do the rendering, so for example, if you do the entire movie with a batch with different batches, you can just click on this one, this button here to render the entire, entire lot. Or if you just want to do one, as I was saying before, if you've done a boo-boo, you just click on that button there. And then to go back into edit, you just click on the pencil, and as you can see, we're back to where we were before. And with the rendering, we can also add effects in too. So like, so if you click on this, FX button, you can add sun and adjust the height. I think you can add shadows as well. So as you can see, we've sort of got, what else can I add? I can also add um, clouds as well. So on top of the originals. Make it cloudy, about the rain. Make it nice and cloudy, just for the exercise, just for... Yep. And sun. Just after storm. And another thing is we can do we can even add some rain if you want but for this just for our sake of our exercise and the time we'll we'll basically just focus on just clouds because otherwise it will take the longer the more effects just be mindful the more effects you add in the longer it will take to render and on average train average size render it would take about 20 minutes so once we've added in our, our effects, we just click on the render button here. And it will take us into this little thing. So as you can see, we've got our, we can either do it as just a little frame. We can just either do it as individual frames, sequences, 
or we can do it as an entire movie but for us because we'll be working with a movie we'll be doing it as an entire movie in full HD so with that we just save it click on full HD in order to save it go into our folder because this is a demo we'll do as a Demo fly through. And as you can see, it is rendering. And what I will do is I will pause the video for a bit and then resume once it finishes. So once we're finished rendering, what we can do is we just save our Lumion file. File, we'll save it as demo, demo model. And then we just exit. And before we finish up, we'll just watch a quick fly through of our video. So as you can see at the moment, it is releasing our license as it is a cloud-based licensing system. So what we'll, what we'll do is we'll just watch our video. There it is there, as you can see. And finally, this is our fly through video. And there you have it. That is pretty much it. And that comp pretty much it for this tutorial. And that completes the, the, completes the series of how-to videos for Urban Informatics. And as I say, that's all there is. There isn't any more. Thank you for watching.